Hey everybody, my name's Seth, and I work at opensource.com. This is the website, uh, our mission statement at opensource.com uh, is that we're trying to spread awareness of open source, telling people what it can do. And part of that is uh, that open source has recently discovered that games exist or gaming has discovered open source, whichever way you want to look at it. And so one of the things that people wanting to either get into games or, or who are in games and want to distribute to more than just one de facto platform is that they're trying to find uh, a game engine. And there's a really neat little game engine called Love, L-O-V-E. Uh, it's really nice, well, it's, it's nifty. I won't say it's really nice, because it won't blow your mind. It's a pretty pretty basic sort of game engine. It does like exactly what you would expect a game engine sort of to need to do. So it, it takes care of your pixels. It takes care of your sound. It takes care of keyboard input and mouse response, things like that. It's, it's, um, it's basically a, a fancy screen buffer. Um, but the cool thing about it is that it, installs on, it runs on pretty much all the platforms that you, you would expect. So Windows, Mac, Linux, Android um, is in progress. I mean, Android does work. There's some niceties that it lacks, such as opening a game from within the engine. There's no sort of file chooser. You have to launch the game in the, in the engine from a file manager, which usually, by default, Android file managers don't know how to do. Uh, but they're working on that. And then iOS, technically, uh, but uh, apparently in order to get it on iOS, you'd have to sort of compile it. And I don't, I don't know what you'd have to do, but it would be up to the user. So realistically, probably not. But uh, it gets you know four out of those five major platforms. It is written in uh, C++, I think I saw that. Um, and it is controlled by Lua. And Lua is a really neat little programming language uh, that you might think, well, why would I use Lua instead of the, um, the obvious choice of Python or something like that? And uh, you could do that. Those are perfectly fine languages, Python, Java, whatever. Um, but Lua is, is quite nice because it, um, it, is, it is a really small, that's not actually what I wanted to look at. It's a really small um, file. It's, it's like a 200 kilobyte file, single file. And you drop that into your, your project, and suddenly you have, you have your, your whole programming language. So it's, it's pretty manageable. The documentation is, um, it, it'll show you all the, all the basic functions that you get. And it's, once again, just kind of, it's exactly what you'd expect a programming language to have. Love takes care of all the, all the fancy stuff for a game. Uh, for instance, here's a quick sample of, um, of a game that was written in love with Lua. It's called Mr. Rescue. kind of does all the stuff that you'd expect the game to do. So I'm just controlling it with the keyboard. It's got animations. It's got music. It's got menus. Stuff like that. So you can make 2D games with love. Uh, and I kind of want to show you sort of the, the process of what that would look like, but we can't spend the time to make um, uh, a Mr. Rescue. So what we will do is uh, make a quick little sample application together right now. Uh, as you can see, um, to launch a, a love game in progress, so as you're developing, it's just a path of, it's just a matter of typing in love, which you, you would have installed on your system, and then uh, here, your, your current directory, your project directory. And this is what we'll build 
uh, together. So this is just a quick little random number, pseudo random number generator. So if I click, it grabs the number and shows me visually what that number is. And this will be about 30 lines of code. And it'll give you an idea of the process of, uh, of making something with love. So we'll make a project directory. We'll call it my project. We'll go into that project directory. So love uh, expects there to be a main.lua file. That's, that's what it needs to see in order to launch. I mean, you can, you can launch it without that, but it, it doesn't know what to do from there. So if we just create a main.lua file, Let's do that. OK, so um, nothing super fancy is required. You can just do sort of a, a, a function. Then the function that, let me make that a little bit bigger. The first function that love looks for is a load function. Now, if you didn't know this, um, you can always just kind of refer to the love documentation. They've got all the libraries and functions, rather. It is a library. It's got all the functions that it gives you uh, in their wiki in a really nicely laid out kind of practical um, format. It shows you examples of how to use each thing. So if you're completely new to this sort of thing, uh, as long as you spend a little time learning the basics of Lua, which isn't all that complex, uh, and and once you have that, you can basically look up the stuff that you need to do with love. And the basic structure of, of any game that you do within this uh, little engine is you've got your load function, which is the stuff that love does when you first launch your game. So it'll do that once. And then you've got your draw function. It'll do that every tick. Every, every millisecond that passes, it'll refresh the screen. and Well, not every millisecond, but uh, as time passes, it will refresh your screen with whatever is in the draw function. And that's really actually all you need to start. So if you just want to get something up on your screen with love, that's, that's, the, that's the skeleton of it. We can create things like a window, uh, and we can give that window a title. We can give it a, uh, some, some dimensions. Now, we could type the dimensions in here manually, uh, but in real life, we would probably make a variable for those things, uh, which we'll do right now. And that way, if we need to change it later, we would have easy access to that. Yeah, so that would actually, that should give us um, something. There we go. There's our window. So that's, that's the love game engine at its most basic, is a window with pixels in it. If we go back to our code, we can change things uh, within that window. For instance, we could say uh, we, that we want to maybe set a background uh, color. And once again, if you didn't know that that function existed, you could look it up in the documentation. You might have to look around for it a little bit, because you wouldn't even know that it was in, uh, oh, it's not in graphics, is it? Uh, what did I type? Graphics? Yeah, it is in graphics. So you, you wouldn't know it's in graphics, and you'd have, to, you'd have to find out what function it is that, that allows you to, to set your background color. But once you figure that out, it's, it's easy enough to use. Uh, the, Colors are in RGB format, so that would be black. Uh, this would be white, which is very confusing to me uh, coming from um, a video background as I do. Uh, zero and one for colors makes no sense to me, so I generally just use um, fractions. Uh, 
so that would be RG, and then if we wanted, uh, let's do some oops, blue. There's a blue screen. So yeah, we'll set it kind of to a gray. Um, so that all of that just loads initially when you first start your, your game. If you want something to appear constantly for as long as the window is open, uh, you need to do that in the draw function. And the most basic thing I guess that you could do is uh, in the graphics um, uh, function, which is, uh, let's do a printf. That'll just get some text on the screen. So we'll do, um, let's do click to roll because we want people to be able to click on our screen and get a random number. So we'll say click to roll. And then there's uh, the positioning, which I've already sort of calculated so that we don't have to figure that out live during this presentation. Uh, but essentially I'm just setting the X and Y values for where this text will appear. And there it is. So way, way down there, really, really small. Um, and it, that's just raw sort of text being printed to the screen. We can make that fancier by defining uh, a font for it. And we only have to define the font once, so we would do that back up in the load function. So we'll say love uh, graphics set new font. Problem is we don't actually have a font to point it to. We can make it a big font, but we don't have a font. So I happen to have a font um, set aside here. So I'll just copy from my previous folder the font. So now our project directory looks like this. It's got our main.lua file, which we're working in, and then it's got the font directory, which contains a couple of different open source fonts, actually one open source font in a couple of different uh, formats. So we can just grab one of these. We'll grab this one maybe. Paste that in there. And it'll need the path, so since we have it in the subdirectory, we'll, we'll include the subdirectory so that it knows where to look. And there we go. Now we've got the same text being printed, but it's using the, the font variable that we've defined, and it's rendering it with the font that we've included. So as long as you're using open source assets, it's pretty easy to make everything self-contained. You're not gonna get weird errors about how the font doesn't exist on the system or anything like that. You can just throw everything into your project directory, which is how love sees itself. So in the end, which I don't even know if we'll get to, but I mean, we'll get to the end, but I don't know if we'll be able to cover the packaging of, of, a, of a love game, but it's, it's just a zip file. You zip up your, your project directory, you rename it to a .love file, and that's it, that's all you do. So that makes packaging super, super easy. All right, so next thing that we need is um, a graphic. And so once again, if we want something to, to be drawn on the screen, as long as the window is open, we need to put that into the draw uh, function. So if we just do like love graphics, new image, and then once again, I don't have an image, so I've set some images aside here. I've sort of pre-manufactured them and named them in a logical, biological system. So I'll copy those from my sample project. There they are. That's our project directory. It's got all of our assets in it. So we can say, okay, this is gonna be image, and we'll just start with zero PNG because um, 
this will be the starting, the starting image. So it could be anything. It could be a splash screen. It could be whatever. But we'll, we'll start with the, an, empty, an empty image. And the way that we'll do that, or rather, the, the way that we'll, we'll draw that is, that's wrong. Um, is we'll draw the, our, our image that we want. Um, and we have to kind of position it with numbers that I've pre-calculated so that we don't have to do it here. And we get an error. I'm not sure what I did there, so let me you look at that. Love graphics draw image zero PNG. That's correct. Okay. This is what I did. So this is the starting image. So we're going to instantiate this as an as an image that exists in the, the, load, the load function. Um, so that's telling Love to load this graphic file uh, as something. So we'll, we'll call it starting image right now. Uh, well, we'll call it start. Actually, we'll call it splash, because I've got something else that I want to use as start later. So. Um, and there we go. There we go, image. Now, of course, it doesn't do anything uh, because we've got no logic in our program. And this is kind of the cool thing about Love is that the way that you make objects, so Love is a, or rather Lua is a scripting language. Uh, it is not an object-oriented language. Um, however, it uses something called tables, which are just, a, it's a fancy term for an array. So if you're used to using arrays in a different programming language, this is the, the same concept, but a little bit simpler than probably the arrays that you're used to. So we'll create a, a table. Let's call it human. And now that's, so that's an empty, an empty global table that exists in our project. We can now use that array to dump new variables into and get variables out of. And it's really easy to do that. So if we just say human.img, for instance, equals this starter image that we want to use, now in our previously empty table of, for human, we have a new field called image. And so we, we define that by simply creating it out of thin air. It doesn't have to be, it can be anything. We could call it image, we could call it splash. It doesn't, doesn't matter, we're just making this stuff up and we're dumping it into our table. And then if we call it again here, then it'll know what image we're, we're calling. So that's that. And we can do lots of different things. So uh, we can do booleans. So we'll say, OK, is this the start of our program? Uh, we'll call it true. Yes, this is the very beginning of our program. We haven't done anything. Nothing's been clicked yet. So we'll say, if human start is true, then we'll print this, this graphic. Uh, else, we'll do something else. Now, the something else that we want to do is the logic part of the program. And so we can, we can use a new function that exists in love. So this isn't something that we're making up. I mean, you can make up your own functions. Uh, but this one is, is, again, it's defined in the documentation. And it is upon a mouse release. So mouse release. 
uh, will say that uh, if, if we have a click and then it's been released, then we will set our human start variable now to false. So it's no longer the start of the game because now there's been an interaction. And then we can use um, Lua functions to, to do some of the stuff in the background that love wouldn't normally do. For instance, love doesn't have a random number generator because Lua already has that. So we can create a random seed up here in, um, in our start function. And this is all just pure Lua now. So this is the Lua math function. This is the Lua uh, time, timekeeping system. We start the seed here in our, in our load function once. And now we can invoke it later because we've got that seed running. And we can say, OK, well, take that random seed and pull out uh, some number from 1 to 6. Um, yeah, and then we can create a new variable. We'll call it uh, pick for now. And we'll say uh, that that is going to be called image uh, die.png, but we'll substitute the word die for whatever the, the random number that we generated ends up being. So this number here is going to be used to generate the name of the image that we show in the, um, in the window. And now we'll redefine human image, which we defined initially up in the load function as just a blank, the blank image. But now we're going to use one of the images that has um, has numbers assigned to it. And we'll do that using uh, whatever, whatever happens to be in our pick variable right now, depending on how, how it's been uh, created. So now, rather than, so, so in other words, if, if it's not the start of the game, there's been an interaction, then we don't want to show the blank image. We want to show the, oh darn it, we want to show the, um, not the right, we want to show the new, the new image, which should be basically, it'll be the same place, uh, and it'll be the same, it'll be the same variable for now. And if I click, we get different numbers. Well, we get, yeah, we get different pictures, rather. And we can do, you know, some niceties, like, okay, well, instead of, instead of printing click to roll, we could just print the, the value of the human roll. And we'll move this one up to the conditional where it's just the starting screen. There you go. Uh, and that's good because we have a couple of minutes to demonstrate how this works if we bundle it up. So this is the complete program for what we just witnessed. It's not that long, it is 32 lines, um, and I think, oh, it's not even 32 lines, really, it is 30 lines. Um, I, I think it's, it's one of those things that's pretty easy to follow, because you've got your initial function of your startup sequence, your init sequence, essentially, and then you've got your loop, and then you've got little exceptions of events that happen, and that's kind of how I think about it um, when, when structuring a game. So we'll save that. Here we are in a in a project directory, and we can go back out and literally just zip this up. So if it's my project dot love, my project, I think I have to do that recursively. Yep. Now we've got a my project dot love, and then if I tell it to launch my project dot love, that didn't work. I 
I know why. I'm not supposed to go back out of the project. Uh, yeah, so we need to do a zip of, we'll still call it my myproject.love. Actually, I think I'm going to call it .zip first, and then I'll rename it, because I, if I recall correctly, uh, it gets confused if I don't do that. So we're including all of our assets in the current directory. There we go. And now we've got myproject.zip. I'll rename that to myproject.love. And then launch it. There we go. So it's a, it's a single file that you can distribute to people. I think in the file system it looks uh, relatively pretty as long as you have love installed on the system. Yeah, there. So people, you know, ideally should be able, let me, let me see if it works. If I click on that, if I double click on that, it just launches it. So it feels and, and sort of acts like a, a real application for, for your end users. They don't have to worry about the, what's inside of here. but if they want to know, uh, then they can unzip it and actually look at it and see all the code. So that's, um, assuming you're totally into open source, that's a good thing because now your, your code is, is visible to others and they can learn from it or possibly help you port it to the latest version of love or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's, and that, that same file, if I were to load that onto my phone, uh, I could launch, I could open that up in Love on my phone and it would work exactly the same. So it's, um, it's kind of nice because it's, yeah, it's pretty portable. Um, there are some other details about the way that tables work that I would like to talk about, but I'm not sure if it's really that important. Are there any questions? Yes. Um, possible, yes, convenient, possibly not. I mean, so you wouldn't, you can compile love separately. I mean, you know, obviously on its own. Um, it is not that huge. It's, uh, it's basically a 60, oh, I think it's 60, 61 megabytes. Um, and then you could you could drop that into your project and sort of ship that with your with your project. But then I mean, then you'd have to sort of yeah figure out how to how to get that to launch. So yeah, I mean, I mean there are ways, but it's it's not not super convenient to do it. No. Any other questions? Cool. Yeah, I think that's it. That's good. Thanks a lot.